Good morning. My name is David Greenfield. I'm the council member from the 44th Council District in Brooklyn. I'm privileged to serve as the chair of the Land Use Committee. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee who are joining us here today. Council Member Gentili, Council Member Palma, Council Member Garadna, Council Member Mendez, Council Member Rodriguez, Council Member Pu, Council Member Rose, Council Member Williams, Chair Richards, Council Member Cohen, Council Member Kalos, who gets the gold star for arriving early this morning, Council Member Reynoso, Council Member Traeger, Chair Salamanca, and Council Member Grudanchik. I want to thank Chair Salamanca, Chair Richards, and Chair Koo for their outstanding work on the Land Use Subcommittee. Today we're going to be voting on LU 759 and 760, the South Avenue Retail Project. In Council Member Rose's district, we'll also be voting on intro number 1685 in relation to exempting certain government entities from plea application requirements for zoning text amendments. We heard a hearing on that last week. The South Avenue Retail Project seeks a special permit pursuant to Section 74-922 of the Zoning Resolution to allow large retail establishments larger than 10,000 square feet and to amend the city map. The project, which would include a BJ's store, is comprised of 219,377 square feet and would include 838 required accessory parking spaces. I just want to recognize that we've also been joined by Council Members Chin and Lander. Introduction number 1685, speaking of Council Member Chin, is a local law sponsored by Council Member Chin to amend the administrative code of the City of New York in relation to exempting certain government entities from pre-application requirements for zoning text amendments. Very exciting, I know. In 2013, the Department of City Planning promulgated rules providing that an applicant must follow a pre-application process prior to following filing a land use application. The rules provide a measure of certainty to potential applicants by placing deadlines on the Department of City Planning, responses to applicant submissions. However, the codification of the deadlines can sometimes prevent a potential applicant from filing for months or even years. Introduction 1685 would allow the mayor and mayoral agencies, the borough presidents, and the Land Use Committee of the New York City Council upon a two-thirds vote of its members to opt out of the pre-application process when a filing a zoning text Amendment. Are there any questions or remarks on these applications? I am going to turn it over to Council Member Rose first to be followed by Council Member Chin for statements on the respective application and introduction. Council Member Rose. Thank you so much, Chair Greenfield. And I want to thank you so much for your patience and understanding about um, the process and allowing us to get here um, with the best possible project that we could, we could have. And so um, we have here before us today an application for a zoning special permit to allow retail establishments larger than 10,000 square feet and a mapping action that will remove unbuilt map streets to prevent development in adjacent wetlands on a property located at the corner of Forest and South Avenues in the neighborhood of Mariner's Harbor. There's been a lot of misinformation swelling around this development. So let me set the record straight. All tidal wetlands will be protected and strengthened, and with the removal of harmful invasive species and the planting of 2,200 native trees and 9,600 shrubs, while preserving more than 1,100 existing mature large trees. I've spent hours in meetings with applicants, with land use experts, and with local residents to arrive at a project that delivers smart planning, environmental preservation, sustainability, resiliency, and economic development. On several occasions, I hosted meetings in my office that allowed residents to speak directly with the developers and environmental and traffic specialists to resolve their legitimate concerns. I've been sensitive to the feedback from all voices, positive and negative, and I've taken their feedback to the negotiating table and worked up to the last minute, as this is testament to, to secure the best outcome for my constituents. But let me be clear, the applicants can put shovels in the ground tomorrow for a project of the same footprint with no approval from the city council needed. But by undertaking this land use process, we have now a development that respects the needs of this environmental justice community, increases our resiliency, decreases our carbon footprint, and brings jobs to local residents and groceries to a food desert. 
while the applicant is required by state and federal regulations to manage all storm water, all storm water on the site at the same rate as the land currently does, my negotiations have secured a commitment to construct several additional bioswales. A bioswale filters storm water and diverts it from storm, city storm drains. In this case, they hold and filter storm water and release at a rate and pattern identical to the current conditions. This project has a series of eight foot wide bioswales throughout the parking lot, as well as two 16 foot wide bioswales in the parking lot. The applicant has also committed to a large aerated retention pond area, new trees, and dry wells in the parking lot. As a result of our negotiations, the applicant will install additional bioswales along all of the proposed street tree pits at the perimeter of the project site and include permeable pavers on the sidewalks lining the enlarged bioswales proposed on the site. Finally, in our negotiations last week, the developer agreed to add a sizable 14,119 square foot bioswale at the northwestern portion of the site. These improvements made during negotiations increased the permeable space on the site by 16,000 square feet over the original proposal. These features will manage rainfall from storms that well exceed the rainfall of hurricanes Irene and Sandy combined. The applicant has also committed to a landscape screening along the length of South Avenue to preserve the existing aesthetics. Through my negotiations, I also secured a public viewing area of the wetlands along the southwest portion of the development site that will include public benches and signage to, prov to provide information about existing natural features. The applicant has committed to installing solar panels on the roof of the development, as well as skylights, cool roof enhancements, and LED motion detected lighting to minimize the carbon footprint of this development. The applicant is required to file documentation with the state to ensure that the development is meeting all requirements to manage storm water on this site at the rate that existed before development and that the new plantings are functioning as described in the stormwater mitigation plan. These documents will also be filed with my office. Additionally, we are including a traffic monitoring program that will be developed in close coordination with my office. We will begin this study sooner than originally proposed to ensure minimal disruption to neighboring residents. A second traffic monitoring program will include other intersections of concern that may be impacted by new construction proposed in the area in the next two years. All large truck traffic will use Forest Avenue, which is a commercial corridor rather than a more residential South Avenue. The applicant will meet with my office quarterly to review the traffic mitigation program and address any traffic concerns produced by this project. The largest expected tenant on the site, BJ's Wholesale Club, will host a job fair with my office to provide in-person opportunities to meet hiring representatives, providing early notification to Community Board 1 and my office of other job hiring opportunities, and reporting to my office on the results of their local hiring efforts. The applicant has also committed to soliciting bids for construction contracts and subcontracts from local and MWBE businesses. The applicant will encourage future tenants on the site to conduct the same outreach efforts as BJ's. I want to be clear to anyone who's encouraging a no vote on this project. A no vote would bring us a development with the same footprint but without any of these commitments that I just listed. A no vote would mean no increased permeability and bioswales, no solar panels and skylights, without benches and signage, no measures to preserve aesthetics, no local and MWBE hiring commitments, and no traffic evaluation or mitigation. Contrary to what some have said, this land, agree land use agreement is a win for protecting the environment. I am voting yes on this application because 
after months of negotiations, we have a project that represents smart, forward-thinking, environmentally conscious planning and responds to the real concerns and needs that I hear overwhelmingly from the community. And I urge my colleagues to vote yes with me. I want to thank Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for her help and assistance. I want to thank our land use chair, David Greenfield, once again for his patience and, um, and for enduring. It takes me longer to read my statement than you. You're a speed reader. Um, and I want to thank zoning chair Donovan Richards for um, his advice and expertise. And I want to thank Ramon Martinez for what Ramon does. Ramon, <laughs> thank you for getting us here. And I want to thank our amazing land use team, Raju Mann, Amy Levitin, Julie Lubin, and John Douglas for answering all of our questions, putting up with all of our crazies, and for um, helping us deliver a project that is environmentally sound and smart. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Rose. Congratulations, and uh, certainly uh, appreciate the importance of what you're doing, especially considering to your point that you made is that this property is currently zoned for a strip mall, and uh, you are going to now allow a BJ's, but with uh, incredible environmental protections that have never happened before anywhere on Staten Island. So that's a significant achievement, and we congratulate you for uh, making those improvements. I want to recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Levin, Councilmember and Chair Ku, Councilmember Barron, uh, Peter Parker, a.k.a. Jumani Williams, rocking the, uh, <coughs> rocking the disguise today. Thank you very much. And I uh, want to turn it over to the uh, main event and the, the big reason why we're here in this fancy chambers today is we're passing very significant legislation today that will allow government agencies, including the Land Use Committee of the New York City Council, to skip the pre-application process. And this is because of a personal experience that Councilmember Chin has had in a fight that she has been battling for years for equity for her community, and she's now giving all of us the ability to improve that here the New York City Council. Let's turn it over to Councilmember Margaret Chen. Thank you. Thank you again, Chair Greenfield, for your leadership. And thank you to the members of the Land Use Committee for last week's hearing on Intro 1685. This is a critical piece of legislation that would allow certain kind of land use applications submitted by the City Council and Borough President's Office to submit complete land use application to the New York City Department of City Planning without completing the time-consuming, repetitive, and sometimes futile pre-application process. Last week, we heard testimony from the Real Estate Board of New York calling this legislation a threat to as of right development. I couldn't agree more. For too long, Lower Manhattan has been subject to as of right super tall structures. It's clear that we need better tools to advocate for community-based land use applications. For years, we have seen these enormous buildings rise over our communities with little or no transparency or public review. Our communities are under threat. People who have no other low-income housing options are now faced with the frightening reality of losing the neighborhoods they work so hard to build. We must give these residents a fighting chance, and we must do it quickly. The ability to submit a complete land use application without having to jump through bureaucratic hoops must be allowed to give our communities a fighting chance in this war against overdevelopment that is altering the landscape in such a way that residents of just a few years ago would be more at home on the moon than in their own neighborhoods. This legislation will help my constituents and all those all over the city work closely with their elected officials to protect their communities. If Repney is threatened by this legislation, well then, good. It's not our job to represent developers. It's our job to give the people a greater voice in their neighborhoods, and that's what democracy is all about. I thank especially to all the land use staff for all the great work on putting this legislation together, and I thank the committee for this opportunity, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member Chen. Congratulations. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, and uh, we're really excited to be able to pass this legislation, which will improve the process and options for all government agencies, including all mayoral agencies, the borough presidents, as well as the Council through the Land Use Committee to skip a process and expedite these applications. Are there any other questions or comments Council Members have? Hearing none, I will ask the Clerk to please call the roll. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Land Use. All items are coupled. Chair Greenfield. Thank you, William. I vote aye on all. Gentilly. Vote aye on all. Palma. Aye. Garadnik. Aye. Mendez. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Ku. Aye on all. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Rose. Aye. Williams. Aye. Richards. Aye. Barron. So Councilmember Barron to explain, explain her vote. vote. Thank you. Um, I'm voting no on land use 759 and 760. It is, I think, a development project that would, in the long run, do great damage to our ability to protect our environment. There is a large number of trees that are going to be removed, and although the developer has said he would plant new trees, it will take decades for those trees to mature, and the impact on the ecosystem between the woodlands and the wetlands would be greatly disturbed, and advocates for environmental justice and looking long range to protect our environment are speaking against this, so I vote no on that project. I on the other. Thank you. Cohen. Aye. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Kalos to explain his vote and costume choice for Halloween. I am uh, deeply proud of the work of uh, my colleague, Councilmember Chin, and uh, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, having put forward a rezoning application uh, that spent two years in pre-application, during which time the original developer went bankrupt twice. A bankruptcy estate was able to sell the assets, and a new developer was able to show up and begin the project from scratch, and uh, we're still moving forward. Uh, I think that not having to wait for as long as city planning may choose to delay something in pre-application is imperative for communities that want to make sure that they have rezonings that are thoughtful and deal with concerns for uh, development that aren't related to any given site, but are related to multiple sites or just changes in markets. And so I, for one, am glad for this, and I'm proud to vote aye, and also congratulations to our colleague, Debbie Rose. Torres. I vote aye. Traeger. Aye. Gorenchik. Aye. Salamanca. I vote aye on all. By a vote of 18 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Item introduction 1685 has been adopted by the committee. And by a vote of 17 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions, land use items 759 and 760 have also been adopted by the committee. Thank you very much. This concludes the land use committee for the meeting of October 31st, 2017. Congratulations to Councilmember Rose and Councilmember Chin. The meeting of the land use committee is hereby adjourned. We're going to reopen the meeting just to correct the vote for the record. William. Introduction 1685 has correction.
has been adopted by the committee. 19 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes the Land Use Committee for the meeting of October 31st, 2017. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>